Welcome to WGVU's Decision 2022, making certain your vote counts. Here, we will provide you, the voter, with information about casting ballots in person at the polls or via absentee ballot. We will go over the basics of the election process and discuss safety measures, making sure elections are secure, transparent, fair, and accurate. Those are words I've heard more than just a few times from our guest, Lisa Posthumous Lyons, Kent County clerk. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. You've been touring the county. I am. <laughs> and I'm glad to see that I'm glad to see that the message is being received. You've got the tagline down perfectly. Well, I, I have heard that a few times yeah. from you, but there's a reason for that, right? The suspicion that people have about elections now after the last big presidential election. What's been taking place and how do you get that message out so that people say, yeah, you know what? They are secure. Yeah. Um, well, it's first I want to say that I love when people ask me questions about the election. Um, you know, questioning elections, uh, asking, you know, questioning the elections and, and seeking out information and and even um, questioning the outcome of elections. This, this really isn't new. Um, we've definitely moved into uncharted territory uh, with it being so prolonged outside of the outside of the legal avenues and processes that are in place to um, challenge election results and that would be you know legal recounts uh, court ordered recounts and um, different different uh, legal avenues in the judicial system so you know I think both sides in in our in our history have had their moment uh, of of uncertainty and, and questioning the elections um, so I kind of have viewed this as really an opportunity to educate the public about the process because I, I really believe the Republic is reliant upon public trust in the process. Uh, but public trust in the process is reliant upon understanding the process and ensuring the integrity and security of that process. And one of the key ingredients to that really is transparency. I think transparency is the key in all of it. And you, you touch on history there, and, and we can all agree, no election is perfect. Whether it's a hand count or a computer tabulator, it's never going to be perfect, but it does need to reach a certain threshold, right? Where mistakes of eh, a percent or two, okay, but it's, you, you want to make sure it's, it's contained to that. Yeah, our elections, um, especially because we're a home rule state, uh, we're, Michigan's really unique in that um, you know, it's not run, elections aren't run centrally by uh, the Secretary of State or really even um, by, by me at the county. They're run at the precinct level, at the, at the jurisdiction level, uh, by our friends and our neighbors. They're, they're uh, run by uh, bipartisan individuals who are working the precincts and the absentee counting boards and um, and admittedly we're all human there is always an element of of some human error that um, that takes place in any endeavor and elections are no different but what's really important then because we're human and we we can sometimes error, what is really critical is the checks and balances that we have in place in our law and our best practices here in Michigan to make sure that those errors are um, discovered, that they're addressed, uh, and, and that people can have confidence in an accurate and a secure election. And that's the audit process, right? And you talked about the legal process as well. So you can challenge and there can be audits. And recently in Gaines Township, because somebody had infiltrated a part of the system you conducted a recount. Correct. Well, so there's multiple checks and balances at every process, at every uh, stage of the process. We're talking, so audits are certainly a part of that. And you now those come into play. They're kind of the last, uh, the last um, component of the post-election um, process, more of a more of a verification. But the checks and balances we have pre-election uh, that we have during and for voting and then post-election really combine to um, to make sure that this these elections are are um, they're transparent and they're accurate and all of these things uh, all these checks and balances within the process again I said transparency is key 
you know, we roll out the red carpet in Kent County. We encourage, you know, I will, I will I'd love to tell people about the process, um, but, and you can trust me, but don't take my word for it. Come and see it for yourself. And so they're subject to Open Meetings Act and we, we post notices, we put the schedule on our website and um, it's really, really important. We're in the Thoreau's, you know, we're, let, we're around two weeks, a little over two weeks out from the election, um, but we've been, we've been working and preparing um, for, for weeks to months for this election. The pre, Pre-election testing is one of those critical components. That's where all of our local jurisdictions, our townships and our cities, will test every one of our tabulators, all of our voting equipment, um, to make sure that the tabulators are functioning properly, that they are zeroed out before the polls open on election day and any ballots are cast. Um, we test our uh, election management system to make sure that um, the programming that's done in my office of the ballots and the, and the tabulators, make sure that that's uh, functioning and, and they're all running on, on, the, on the right cylinders. So again, open meetings, those are going on right now um, in our jurisdictions throughout Kent County and in jurisdictions throughout the state. Um, and in the meantime, we're also busy training our election inspectors. Uh, I said they're run by our friends and our neighbors. Election administration is truly nonpartisan endeavor, but um, it's run by bipartisan election workers from the Republican Party, from the Democratic Party, to help ensure some, some of that accountability. That's another check and balance we have. And so we're training, uh, my office is responsible for training about 1,500 of the 2,000 election inspectors, they're, they're technically called, uh, to make sure that, that they are ready to go on election day and that our voters have a, a great experience at the polls and that they're prepared for the absentee counting board because it's a totally, they're very different uh, processes. You've been at this for how long? So <laughs> I took office as clerk in January of 2017. This will be my uh, 20th election, so. So I've enjoyed it. a little, um, let's go back. It changes, changes have occurred over time, right? I mean, uh, we can look at the way we vote, right? You can vote in person. That's always been the standard, but also now there was always absentee voting, but that has been expanded. Sure. So how has it changed? How has it impacted <laughs> elections? There have actually, there's been several changes that have taken place since I took office, and, and we'll start in 2017. Um, one of the first major changes that, that took place in that first year was the state, um, every county in the state moving to uh, and, and implementing new election equipment. Different elections, uh, different election systems, and that was um, that was a really important thing that had to had to happen because our um, our equipment at that time was getting old, antiquated, outdated, and was, we were starting to see um, some equipment failure. So we um, statewide, every county um, selected one of three um, certified and vetted election um, election systems and those began to be implemented. Um, then you go into 2018 where this is the first statewide election, the first countywide election we had with this new equipment. Um, and on that ballot, as you said, uh, we're talking about with 2018, voters, um, voters overwhelmingly passed uh, Proposal 3, which implemented a whole host of, of election changes in the Constitution, one of them being no reason absentee voting. And we have, um, we have seen that really have an impact um, to what degree, to what degree it was simply just the uh, Proposal 3 provision of no reason absentee. I can't quite quantify because the first statewide election we had with no reason absentee voting was conducted during a pandemic in 2020. And so, you know, as we had been seeing for cycles, even before 2018, when, when no reason absentee voting passed, it, voters were more and more and more taking advantage of that opportunity to cast a ballot uh, via absentee. And then, you know, you, there's a huge spike in 2020, simply part, partly because of the new provision and partly because of the pandemic. And um, so there's definitely a lot of changes we've seen. We've seen a lot of increased participation in absentee voting. We've seen a lot of increased interest in how that process works and questions about making sure their vote counts and it's secure. Um, and so 
we're going into um, this November where I expect, I, I don't expect we'll see much below 50% absentee voting versus in-person voting. So we'll, that, that, was kind of, that was kind of the percentage we saw in the primary in August as well. When will you count those <coughs> ballots? I know that had been an issue in the last election, which delayed results, but we have a change now when it comes sure. to that. Um, Absent, I think it's really important to differentiate because we all see a lot of national media and, and um, you know, media stories talking about early voting and voting by mail and, and um, you know, you'll see that coming into Michigan. It's, it's time, early voting has started. It's really important to differentiate that. Michigan is not an early voting state. We're an absentee voting state, but we're not an early voting state. Early voting is different from Michigan in that they, they begin tabulating votes and counting votes prior to election day. We don't do that in Michigan. We count votes on election day. So um, before, the poll, or before the polls open, a new, new law has been enacted. Um, absentee voting counting boards can begin pre-processing these ballots, uh, and what that means is they can they make sure the signature on the envelope matches the signature that we have in the voter file um, so that we can, we can accept and count that ballot. They open the ballots, take it out of the outside envelope, maintain it in the secrecy sleeve, uh, and compare the ballot number to the number that was issued in the voter file. So that's kind of pre-processing to try and save some time on the front end. It's newer, um, as I mentioned. It, you know, the jury's still out on if that's really an effective, um, an effective measure in terms of cost benefit with the timing, with the time. But um, we don't begin tabulating and running those ballots through until the polls open at seven o'clock on election day. And then they'll continue to count those absentee ballots until, until all of them have been um, tabulated and then they'll be reported. And then you've got the ballots that fall into the Dropbox. So that's another thing. It's, it's interesting, the attention on Dropbox is uh, since 2020, they're, they're really not new. They're certainly not new to Kent County, but because of, I think, the pandemic and more interest in absentee voting, they were certainly much more promoted um, and, and therefore utilized uh, beginning in 2020. So um, absentee ballots have got to be returned and deposited into your jurisdiction's drop box or returned to your local clerk by 8 o'clock on election night by the time the polls close in order for your absentee ballot to count. So that's a really important um, important thing that I want voters to make sure they know postmarked is, uh, postmark doesn't count. Make sure you get an absentee ballot returned before the polls close on election day. For anybody who questions the process of absentee or the drop box, <laughs> how do you respond to them? Well, I think it's really important. Again, drop boxes aren't new. I think uh, what we've seen over the last couple of years well, how, just the attention on it kind of helps to make sure we're being vigilant to, to ensure that those drop boxes are secure. Um, I was pleased to see that the legislature, as part of this pre-processing um, pre uh, measure, also implemented um, some security measures, like making sure they are bolted down, making sure the drop boxes are are locked, making sure that there's um, you know security footage on on these newer drop boxes. And um, what I think is also really important is maintaining maintaining a log uh, of activity with those drop boxes. So part of that is uh, a requirement that only the clerk or the deputy or a uh, sworn staff member who's taken the oath of office can um, remove those ballots and they have to document document what time, what day, who the staff person was and how many ballots were in there. And so I think that's kind of an important measure. Um, other, uh, the other things I think is important to mention with absentee voting, Michigan has always been able to boast that we do not send automatic ballots out to people. In order to get an absentee ballot, voters must submit an application that's signed. And I think that is a really important security measure because that signed application is verified with the, um, with the signature we have on, on file. So before an, a ballot is even issued, 
we're checking that signature to make sure. And then um, on the back end, after an individual has, has voted and they send their absentee ballot back, they're required to then sign the outside envelope of the absentee ballot. Um, and that, uh, when it re is returned, is also verified. So there's, there's signature verifications on both ends, which I think is very important. And the critical thing is that we just don't send absentee ballots out without a signed application. When I vote in person, what can I expect? Uh, any changes? What uh, what should I expect? Sure. Um, we we do a really great job here in Kent County, making sure that we have um, that we have enough election inspectors, people working people working our elections, both both parties uh, being present and available. Um, and that's that's not just to um, our credit in promoting that it's to the local uh, clerk's credit and it's to the voters credit for wanting to be a part of their election. So I'm really grateful that we have that here in Kent County where we're never left wanting for more election inspectors. We'll take them, but we're, we are always well staffed. Um, when a voter comes to the polls, they will uh, be met by, they'll be met by the election inspectors and they uh, have their ID ready to show um, if they don't have ID with them, they will, the Michigan law allows them to sign an affidavit that's swearing they, they're attesting they are who they say they are. Um, and that's part of the application um, when they come in and then they're issued the ballot. So you, your voter will be issued the ballot after showing the, after filling out the application, showing their ID or signing the affidavit and they'll go to their voting booth and make their selections. Once that, once that happens, they'll go to the tabulator. Um, you know, those ballots are kind of put in a secrecy sleeve. Uh, the, tab, the ballot stub, which has a number on it that corresponds, the number of that ballot is entered into the voter's name in the poll book. So again, we can, we can say, okay, this individual did vote. They did receive a ballot. This is what ballot number it was. Um, but the secrecy of the ballot is really, um, really, fundamental and foundational. So that you vote is um, is public information. How you vote is not. So we take that ballot stub, we maintain that, um, and then the voter puts their t uh, ballot inside the tabulator, and they'll see on the tabulator that it's counted. It'll not notch that up one. Um, if there's a problem, the tabulator will also tell them that. So if they made a mistake, they can go back and spoil their that ballot, get a new one, and uh, go through it again. And the polling stations will be secure. People can feel safe there. I mean, not clearly, you know, tensions are running, running a little hot with politics right now. But if, if you show up and you just want to vote and make that part of your civic duty, will you, feel, will you feel comfortable when you walk in? Absolutely. I want voters to know that it is safe and they are secure. Not only are our elections secure, but, but they are, they, they can be as well. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of, we've heard a lot of tension, seen a lot of, a lot of um, things going on, threats being made, um, you know, throughout the country. But I, I tend to just be an optimist when it comes to elections. And I think part of that is here in West Michigan, that tends to be more our culture. Um, it certainly, it's been, certainly, it's been, it's been a challenging, two years, we've, we've dealt with, with folks that, that may be less than polite or, um, or, or you know, things like that. But I want, I want to be part of, I want to be part of the, um, I want to be part of the solution and part of the um, assurance that voters have in kind of toning some of that rhetoric down based on what we've experienced here in Kent County, all of our local clerks, our election workers, myself, my staff, our team, we just haven't, we have not seen any threats of violence, um, anything like that. And I really think it's important for, for me as, as a leader and an ambassador for elections to differentiate the challenges that we've been facing and some of the, some of the um, tension and, and um, and con controversial conversations, things like that, differentiate that with bona fide real threats to safety because it's a, it is it is very different and um, it's just something I have no reason to expect here in Kent County. Um, that's not to say we're not prepared. 
every election. Um, this is going back to prior to 2020. Every election, uh, we work with the Kent County Sheriff's Office. There's always a plan, an election day plan in place to make sure that the voters are safe, to make sure that our election workers and our local and county clerks offices and staffs are safe. Um, so we treat this election just like we treated November of 2020, just like we treated every election before that. We are prepared, but I can, I am very confident in, um, in Kent County, the, the safety and the security of our voters, our election workers, and our election officials. You and your staff have done a great job uh, preparing for the upcoming election and taking the time to walk voters through the process. This is a, a document that you can find at Access Kent. Yes. And this is your elections 101 information document. And you really do walk people through any questions that they might have. Anything we haven't touched on in this conversation that's in here that you think? Yeah, I think yeah. I, there's a couple other things. So we kind of talked a lot about the pre-election preparations that we're doing, the pre-election checks and balances. Uh, we talked a lot about absentee voting, voting in the polls, and some of those checks and balances. But post, but I think it's important. I want to talk about post-election um, process as well. But man, paper, 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 paper. Michigan has paper ballots. Some states, um, there's several states I think that don't utilize paper ballots, but but for us in Michigan, I just think it's one of the one of the most old-fashioned, underlooked um, security measures we have in place because we can always go back to those ballots. Always, it's an it's a whether it's a recount or something with the courts, um, and they're frankly just public documents. If if voters are curious, they have the ability to um, to view those ballots, and so I think it's really important that the voters understand how important paper is. And we do duplicate all of, you know the paper tapes that show the election results from the tabulators, not just one copy, three copies going three different places. Um, a really key component of the checks and balances post-election is our county canvas. That's open to the public. We encourage everybody to come. I want you to see the thorough measures we take in balancing, making sure every precinct balances with the number of ballots issued, with the number of ballots cast, the um, vote, the number of uh, votes received in each race um, on the tabulator versus the number of votes received that we reported. It is a very thorough process, and I think that canvas alone gives would give voters the confidence that they need. And then we have the final. Uh, the final component is the audits, which we touched on. So for anybody who questions the tabulators themselves, the electronic equipment, and the idea that this can be infiltrated, give me a sense, and our viewers, how this works so that it is safe and secure. What, what are some of the safety features that are built in? We have, so our, our tabulators are programmed um, by my office um, to respond to certain ballot markings because we also program the ballots so that when when a voter marks a certain bubble that tabulator we program that to be able to um, recognize and respond to that to that bubble and and apportion that vote to the appropriate candidate um, so you know it's a it's a very tedious process to program ballots we have um, in Kent County because we have 250 precincts we have over you know, over 250 ballot styles because of different school districts and things like that. Different people in one precinct will get different ballots. So um, they are also very, um, we, have, we have security seals that have serial numbers, again, that, um, that are recorded in the poll book, they're checked in the audit, things like that. There's a, there's a code that election workers need to know to be able to open the tabulator and get it running. Same thing with it, uh, with it, um, with closing down the polls. And one of the most important things I want people to know about our tabulators and our election equipment there is that um, neither the poll book, the electronic poll book, nor our tabulators are, are connected to the internet. They remain, so we have, you know, we have a tabulator in each precinct. We have thousands of precincts. Each tabulator is separate from the other and separate from any, any network um, any central network. And so we receive our, we don't receive our results until the polls are closed, 
that is shut down, the tapes are printed, the paper tapes are printed with the results, and then those results are um, transferred to my office via a secure uh, VPN. So there's just a lot of things that we put in place to make sure that, that this process is secure and that um, our equipment is properly functioning. And again, we test it. We, when the test, we know what the results are supposed to be when we're testing before the election. And so when the tabulator tabulates and the tape comes out, we see those results matched up to what we know to have supposed to be the results. And that's how we know the machines are accurate and they're functioning. And for more information, access Kent.com. KentCountyVotes.com. Yeah. This is a great document. Thank you. Give it a read, right? Yes, absolutely. All yep. right. Lisa Posthumus Lyons, Kent County Clerk, registered. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you for joining us on WGVU's Decision 2022.